I'm OJ Borge, ahead of the global reveal of the new Call of Duty game, World War II Call of Duty, going back to its roots. I'm with Mr. Dalek JD. How excited are you right now? OJ, I am ridiculously excited right now. It's a brilliant venue, beautiful venue, in fact. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a fair bit of art wrapped around the entire IMAX. Have I noticed it? It's unbelievable the way they've done it. They've wrapped the entire 360 degrees of this, the BFI, the IMAX, biggest screen in the United Kingdom. That's what they've done. Are you colder or more excited? I would say more excited, but cold is definitely So up let's there. go inside, because we're ahead of it. We've got the global launch, which is just a few minutes away. And um, I'm so hyped about this. And many people from the community are hyped about this game as well. And it really is. When they first announced that it was going back to World War II, people got super hyped about it, didn't it they? It was unprecedented amounts of hype. I've never seen so much positivity flying in for ages. It's honestly really, really exciting Well, let's stuff. talk through how people who are coming to this, this global reveal, how they're coming. They'll come against this board. Sir, could you just take this picture of us, please? Don't you mind taking this picture of us? So they'll stand against this board. Hey, you're good at this. You should do this for a living. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we got the photo there. So a quick look. That is a good photo. Then they will go good. up. It is very good. So they go up the stairs. The one thing I wanted to ask you, um, Dalek, is what is your first memory of Call of Duty? How did you first get into Call of Duty? Because this is your life now, isn't it? It is. I didn't expect it to become part of my daily life, but I was introduced to it from some school friends uh, maybe about nine or ten years ago, and as soon as I started playing it, I was hooked. There's just something about it that you just can't get enough of. Well, for me, Call of Duty was the game that ended all of the games. I'd be sent them and I'd go, nah, I'd throw it away, and especially the World War II games. Now, we're just taking you through. Now, as this global reveal happens, we've got lots of different countries who'll be streaming it as well. This is Middle East. They're doing their pre-show right now, so we won't interrupt them. Um, and if we go through here, we can see the other territories. Of course, this is being a global release. Uh, that's Spain. They're actually live right now. Hola. Hola. There you Hola. go. Uh, and this is our French friends. Jonas, hi. Bonjour. Ça va? Hey. How are you doing, OJ? Good, thank you. Ça va? That's it. That's all the French I know. And then we've got <laughs> our friends from... Where are you guys from? Italy. Italia. Italy. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. I tell you, I did not concentrate when it came to I'm languages I'm glad you got school. that right, you know. But the fact is, this is a global game. And the it's fact that it's going massive. back to World War II, people are super excited. Germany, um, people are excited, aren't they? They are extremely excited. It's been, I'd say, it's been the sort of game people have wanted for years and years. And the fact that this year we're actually getting it. It's no longer a dream. We're getting World War II Call of Duty. Boots back on boots are back on the ground so um, let's go in here this is this is the way it happened this is the IMAX screen which is through here so so the announcement is happening it'll be through here this wall ah guys sorry have you got a pass no you're not got a pass you'll have to stay here then and you'll have to watch the global reveal like everyone else darling we'll have to go in see you at six
Peggy 18. This day have set upon a mighty endeavor. Souls will be shaken with the violences of war in this hour of great sacrifice. We shall prevail. We are all that separates the world from darkness. The enemy is ruthless. We cannot. We must not fail. Duty first. There is! Won't be enough for you! We executed the mission. Get me the fuck out of here. How many? We had orders! Lieutenant, tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult. No sacrifice too great. Welcome to the bloody first. You're a long way from Texas for him, boy. You just saw the world premiere of the reveal trailer for Call of Duty World War II. And we're just getting started. We're streaming to you live from the middle of London, but today is all about you, our fans all over the world. This game is the game that you've been waiting to see, and believe me when I say it's the game that we've been waiting to show you. Call of Duty has the most passionate fans anywhere, and throughout this live stream, we're gonna be answering the questions that you've sent to us from all over the world over the last few days. When we greenlit this game, three years ago now, we knew it was time for us to go back to our roots, back to the gritty, authentic, visceral military experience that Call of Duty was built on. This game delivers all that, and it also strives to capture the intense bonds of brotherhood that came from common everyday people who rose above the most epic and horrible conflict in human history. And with Sledgehammer Games at the helm, we knew we had the right team to deliver the cinematic scale and the relentless attention to detail that this conflict deserves and demands. Their passion and creativity has been inspiring to me from day one. Call of Duty World War II does more than just go back to boots on the ground. It also delivers a gripping, immersive story and a darker, reverent tone, which captures both the epic scale and the human struggle of this incredible conflict. Like so many people all over the world, many of us, myself included, have a personal connection to this conflict through family members who fought in this war. This story belongs to the entire world. This game truly recaptures that first Call of Duty value that no one fights alone. Call of Duty World War II also features a multiplayer game that brings back the intense, visceral, boots-on-the-ground gameplay our fans love, along with some great new innovations that push the game forward. And if you can't wait until November to play it, well, good news, you don't have to. I'm excited to announce right here, right now, that later this year, we'll be hosting a private multiplayer beta. This is just the beginning of a journey that we'll be taking with you all year. You're going to be hearing more from us more often with more information than ever as we reveal all the details we've got in store for you with Call of Duty World War II. And that starts right now. We've got a great lineup here today ready to answer the questions that you've sent to us. In a few minutes, I'll be bringing up Michael and Glenn from the studio as well as a few members of our cast. As you'll see, the team at Sledgehammer has poured their heart and soul into this game. No battle was too big, no detail was too small. From the painstaking historical research to visiting each and every one of the game's real-life locations, to sweating the audio and visual details that get the era just right. The goal was to create the most immersive World War II universe ever. We wanted our long-standing fans to experience World War II like never before, and to introduce this historic conflict to a whole new generation of players along the way. So let's get right to it. Here's a behind-the-scenes look at the creative process at the studio, and a deeper look at what's coming in store with Call of Duty 
World War II. The Second World War goes beyond all boundaries in every category. We see more nations involved in a single conflict. We see casualties higher than ever before. Just a generation before, at the end of the First World War, the Great War, they didn't call it World War I because they expected that nothing like this would ever happen again. And a generation later, something happens that's even bigger and even worse in so many ways. We have the honor of making this year's Call of Duty called World War II. Our chance to tell the epic, gritty, visceral story of the world's greatest conflict. There is a genuine interest in producing a product that is historically authentic. Every part of this, this game has been researched and nuanced and studied and scanned and photographed. We really, really try to get the respect and the, the details right of the game. This is about ordinary people doing extraordinary things brotherhood, the camaraderie, um, the guy next to me. That became the theme for our game. On a personal level, honoring the story was crucial for us, and it was something we really committed to. Our story weaves in and out of real historical events. We've gone to great pains to create those authentic battles. One of the biggest things we wanted to get across was a sense of camaraderie. The people you serve side by side with, you develop bonds with those people. Hopefully players will walk away from this story feeling like they really know these guys. Welcome to the Bloody First. And they care about them. Art influences the game in a huge way. The lighting and the tonality and the colors. We want to be able to have the player feel something. By creating a very believable environment, it allows the player to slip into this world. The vision for the art direction we call dark and beautiful. It was emotionally dark, visually beautiful. More than just being cool and pretty, it's about trying to get people to have a deeper emotional reaction to the game. Our modeling department is amazing. The weapons, vehicles, the tanks, even the cars you might see on a city street. The level of detail is just phenomenal. It's a huge endeavor, but we have to stay true to the source material. We have to research and watch a lot of film, a lot of archive footage to see how combatants in World War II would behave. Sometimes the hardest things are the biggest payoff. The combination of the model, the animation, and the audio creates that punchiness to the weapon. We record everything. Every location we record in for the game, the ambiences, the music, the dialogue, everything has to be created from scratch. We had a real opportunity here to do a level of authenticity and reality, true to the war, true to the soldiers who fought in that war. We had this great opportunity with Marty Morgan, our military advisor. We spent a lot of time on a gun range with all of the authentic World War II weaponry. It's critical to understand the absolute violence of the Second World War. It's critical to understand how weapons and firepower function. This is a story that's bigger than all of us. This is a whole new generation who might not have a lot of experience with this time period. I think this is a great opportunity to have them experience that and feel that. We've made something pretty incredible and I'm very proud of it. It's perhaps the greatest compliment I've been paid in my career to work on this project. This is the most powerful game I've ever worked on. It's very personal, it's very humbling. You know, I've been making games for over 26 years. And I'll tell you, it's the best game we ever made. And that is how you do a global reveal, because that's what it was, the global reveal of the new Call of Duty game, going back to World War II. I'm OJ Borgia at the BFI in London, the IMAX screen, the biggest screen in the United Kingdom, which seems a fitting place to have a game of such cinematic scope. Now, watching that trailer for the first time, like you, I was so hyped watching it, and I would be hyped if it was any Call of Duty game, but the fact that Call of Duty is going back to its roots, I mean, I just, I need to just calm down just slightly, because I'm overhyped right now. But between the trailer and the video that we just saw, I am dying to know more about this game, and as I'm sure you are, that's why you've tuned into this live stream. So who do we talk to? <laughs> well, we talk to the people who made the game. That is Glenn and Michael from Sledgehammer Games. We're here right now. How excited are you guys right now? Dude, after two and a half years of sitting quiet, this is an incredible moment, so thanks. <laughs> it is just an exciting moment. Now, yeah. my heart's still racing. Happy the audience picks up on that. Thank you. It was a great trailer. My heart's still racing from it. It was gritty. We talked about the art direction in that, in that documentary, which was dark and emotional. 
Do you know, it felt like what I would guess it would be like to be in World War II. Can you tell us a bit more then about the detail and the research that went into making this new Call of Duty? Yeah, you know, getting uh, World War II right is incredibly important to us. Uh, many of us have uh, family members that have been touched by the war, and paying attention to every detail is our way of honoring them. Uh, we spent two and a half years researching, studying, taking thousands of photos, watching documentaries, and meeting with World War II veterans. Um, we visited museums, driven vehicles, fired weapons, and used photogrammetry techniques to capture even the tiniest details. Yeah, that's right. Look, we've gone to great lengths to follow in the footsteps of the soldiers of World War II. You know, in addition to Normandy, we literally traveled the routes of the 1st Infantry Division and other allied units, from the English Channel to the hedgerows of northern France, through Luxembourg and Belgium and past the old city of Aachen, frankly, all the way to the Rhine. And it was great. We dug deep into the historical battle locations where many of the soldiers fought and sacrificed. You talk about history, you talk about the accuracy. Am I right in thinking you had a historian working on this? In fact, we saw him, didn't we? We in did. In that mini-doc. Yeah, we certainly did. Marty Morgan, amazing. He's renowned World War II history historian and author. Um, he's been a huge part of the team. He's worked with us for the last two years, and he's frankly devoted his life to capturing the stories of soldiers on the front line. And so with him as a cornerstone of our research um, and a tremendous sort of asset to the team, he's really helped us capture the essence of war for fans. Now, we only learned about this a couple of days ago. You'll have been sitting on this, I think Glenn said, for two and a half years. Since the reveal, how are you feeling right now? What have those days been like? Oh, my goodness. It has been really amazing. Unbelievable, frankly. And, yeah, it, the reaction's been really positive and warming and really to the, all the hardworking developers at Sledgehammer Games back home and to everybody at Activision, it's really been great. And for Glenn and I, it's really humbling to have, you know, the opportunity to tell this incredible story of heroism, to honor the men and women who've sacrificed to bring around victory in what really is history's greatest conflict. And you know, the, uh, the team back in Foster City is watching the stream right now, and a shout out um, to all of you, and thanks for your hard work. I'm guessing it has been two and a half years of hard work. Yeah. Really hard work. Now, we've got tons to discuss, more questions that are coming in from you. You can get in touch with us on our social channels. And if they say that no man fights alone, no man presents alone either, because alongside me is a YouTuber. I call him the crown prince of zombies. That is Mr. Dalek JD, who I know is super hyped right now. That is correct, OJ, and uh, I mean, that introduction was beautiful, and uh, I'm just so happy to be here, and he's exactly right. Since Friday, we've been taking in your questions about the game via Twitter, and the response has just been phenomenal, and there is still time to get your questions in if you haven't already. All you'll need to do is make sure that you tweet at Call of Duty, making sure you use that hashtag, COD World War II. Now, we already have some tweets to kick off the show. We have uh, at Cow's Tweetings, who says, I'm so excited. I can't believe it. COD is going back to its roots. See, there you go. That's what a lot of tweets are saying, that Call of Duty going back mm -hmm. to, its, to its roots. But this is all about gameplay as well. How does it, going back to its root, translate to gameplay? Yeah, Call of Duty World War II returns to that grounded, fast action gameplay that the franchise was built on. And for us, the core Call of Duty experience, like the conflict of World War II, really puts an emphasis now on rewarding gun skill and strategy. And with an all-new boots-on-the-ground experience, that immerses players in the intense combat of World War II like never before. We're bringing some great new innovations too, you know, things that were designed to elevate the player experience, things we want to touch about, but we're going to save for a little bit later in the show. We are indeed saving it for a little bit later. Make sure you stay tuned to this live stream. There's lots of things coming up. But Dalek, how do you feel about that? I'm extremely excited by the fact that it's been nearly 10 years since Call of Duty has been in the World War II era. And I mean, that in itself is just extremely exciting. And... Judging by you guys over on Twitter, it seems I'm not the only one. Uh, loads of fans are expressing their excitement around the fact of us being able to experience World War II era weaponry. Uh, fans like Games412412 who tweets in saying, what kind of weapons will we be seeing in Call of Duty World War II? Well, the team worked to bring a wide variety of weapons, you know, from both the Allied and Axis forces to life. And for us, authenticity was key. So from the iconic ping of the empty M1 Garand to the power of the first assault rifle, the STG-44, these guns have a real weight to them that is really visceral. And it really, for me, brings me back to my fondest memories of playing Call of Duty with the fidelity now and the brilliance of what's only possible in the latest generation of gaming hardware. No automatic weapons symbolize brutality of World War II more than the belt-fed MG-42, which you'll see. 
terrifyingly powerful weapon. Um, there's the bold action rifles of World War II and the singular damage that they could inflict in combat, like the M1903. Um, and equipped with scopes or iron sights, these weapons were frankly pretty precise. And of course, Glenn here with his 45 caliber grease gun, <laughs> running around in spray and pray <laughs> mode, you know. Uh, let's not start. <laughs> <laughs> that just scratches the surface, frankly. The king of spray and pray, eh? So, Glenn, what, what did you enjoy most then about making a World War II game with the current hardware? Yeah, good question. Uh, you know, I really love the detail we can bring to the game nowadays, uh, the way the soldiers walked and talked, uh, the music of the era, the different locations we researched um, as the big set pieces for iconic battles. In Normandy specifically, it's the emotions created by combining elements like the sound of the 50 caliber uh, rounds hitting the front of the boat, the vehicles crashing into the shore, and taking cover behind the hedgehogs. In each case, we're targeting the most realistic gaming experience possible. And that's what it's about, isn't it? That realistic experience, that visceral yeah. sound that goes on as well. Dalek, what else is the community wanting to know? Well, Borg, we have a tweet in from It's Enigma for the Win, who wants to know what locations are we going to be fighting in? Well, the game takes place uh, entirely in the European theater, primarily between 1944 and 1945. And as you saw in the reveal trailer, players will storm the beaches of Normandy on D-Day, fight through the Hurtgen Forest, uh, engage in urban combat through France and Belgium, and ultimately push towards Germany. Yeah, that's right. And we want to showcase how ordinary men and women came together to accomplish the extraordinary. And while the story follows the 1st Infantry Division, we also fold in a story of diverse and global cast of characters like Major Crowley from the SOE. Now, he's a, a UK intel um, officer who earns recognition for his heroism earlier in the war. He helps plan the Normandy landings and then coordinates with the French resistance activities. Yeah, and while uh, fighting through the German lines in France, uh, players will be introduced to other great characters, such as Rousseau, the powerful female leader of the French resistance who forms a close bond with all our cast members, um, cast of characters, as the story progresses. Throughout much of the campaign, though, you're going to play as Private Red Daniels, a young recruit who is seeing some of his first real action in the invasion of Normandy. He's joined by his best friend, Zussman, a Jewish-American private. You'll follow our squad across the European theater. And we're excited to say that a part of the cast is here today to talk more about the incredible journey. They are indeed. We'll bring up on stage in a second. Glenn, Michael, don't go anywhere, because we will be talking to you later on with some more questions from the community. Keep them coming in. But please do give a warm welcome to Jonathan Tuck, who plays Red's best friend, Private Zussman. If we swap everyone out, let's swap everyone out here as we do this bit. And Jeffrey Pierce, who plays Lieutenant Turner. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much. And it's great to have the cast in as well, because one of the great things about Call of Duty has been that. It's been the great storytelling that goes on. And we've got the three J's here mm. right now. Josh, <laughs> I know you've had a huge amount of passion from this game since day one, being part of this project. What most excited you? Well, when I first heard about it, I sat with, with Brett and with uh, Glenn, and uh, they wouldn't even tell me what the game was at first because it was so <laughs> confidential. Uh, and then, you know, they just told, you know, it was really about what, what the history of this was about and how much detail they wanted to pay to it. And as I, as I really got to, you know, learn more about it and actually start working on the game, not only did they pay attention historically, but the writing was so incredibly good. I mean, it rivals any, anything that I've ever read, you know, you know as far as movie scripts. So, you know, it, it's just something that I've always wanted to do, and it turned out to be as much fun as, as any job I've ever had. And as Eric said earlier on, a lot, the story of World War II touches a lot of people emotionally. And that was something you brought into your performance, I would guess. Yeah. I mean, again, who knew? I thought it was just going to be a good time playing, you know, getting to work on a video game. And it turns out that these, you know, some of the scene work we got to do in this, in this game was, 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 was amazing. And, and these characters are so well-rounded. And, um, you know, they, they were right. They really did pay a lot of attention to you know, being historically accurate and making sure these characters were, were, were had a lot of depth. And if we're talking about characters, tell me about your character, the guy you play. Well, uh, I don't know, boys. What was he? <laughs> he's, we he's, came he, to love he's, you. He's, he's, he's a bit of a dick. Uh, he's somebody who is obviously mission before man, and 
you know, it, 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 was, it was something that was fun for me because I love playing the dick. I love playing the guy who <laughs> everybody hates. And ultimately, he, he, he has the dilemma about, you know, is it, is it mission before man or is it really man before mission? Because he connects to these guys by the end of this story. And, and that's really what, what drew me to it. Well, if we're talking about that connection, what was it like then, Jeffrey, when you're working together, that brotherhood feeling, when you're capturing your performances? Well, we've been working together for a year and a half at this point. Uh, once a month, coming in, work four or five days. And we, I think we all bonded extraordinarily well. I mean, you don't mesh with people necessarily, uh, but we walked in the room and felt like I'd known these guys for 10 years. And they, the work that we're being asked to do is of a scope of a massive feature film. And the storytelling sort of uh, uh, where games are at now, what you can capture, the, the detail and performance. Story is as important as gameplay. And gameplay has always been seamless in Call of Duty, but this is like really getting to do work of a level that, that you would expect to do in a film. And once you get past the, you know, the tight suit and the little reflector ping pong balls you, you and you the make helmet that work. and the camera, you really make once that you work. get past that, it feels like you're doing theater, I swear. Yeah. Because there's no, you know, there's no coverage, there's no yeah, close-up. Yeah. So the, everybody is active the entire time in the, in the motion capture or the PCAP sessions that we're doing. And it, it's an extraordinarily active, dynamic process where everybody is working the entire time. It's, a, it's an exciting process to be mm -hmm. a part of as an actor. The performances uh, are so much more visceral and it's so, so much more of an exciting process to be a part of. And you're relying on everybody else to help you get where you need to get. It's, it's, a, it's a great experience. Well, because that's something you said to me earlier. I mean, I don't want to give anything away, but we met in the gym this morning. We bumped into each other. We were doing our mirror work, bumps and tons. <laughs> um, and you said it was like being on stage, and it, and it lent a whole new dimension to your performances. Because I think when you're doing TV or film, you can, you can be off, can't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, Josh and I, you know, this is our first video game. Jeff's done quite a few. Um, we're, we're used to just sitting back on our <laughs> Apple boxes in between takes, letting other people get their shots, but for the first time, we really had to work. You the know, way the yeah. entire scene. I mean, <laughs> up to this point, it was just, you know, we, just, we just do our close-up and then let Adam somebody there. else do the other side. <laughs> exactly right. Head off to the trailer. Yeah, off to my trailer. I'll, uh, call me in. <laughs> no, but I mean, That's eight, not it. I swear to God. That's not it. 18 months with these, 18 months with these guys. I've gotten to see both their kids grow up. They've gotten to see my dog get bigger. You know, we've seen other cast members, you know, lose girlfriends, get girlfriends. So that camaraderie was very reflective of this group of regular people who are diverse in religion, from in age, in geography, uh, in color, and getting to see that group of people um, in World War II is, I think, a wholly unique um, is a wholly unique uh, part of this part of this game that I think people will appreciate when they're playing. When you scratch the surface, uh, you find out that these guys they're not fighting for bigger ideas than the love of the brothers around them and risking their lives sacrificing themselves for each other. Mm -hmm. It's not about flag or country when the rubber meets the road. It's about caring for each other, and, and, and that serves the, the bigger whole. But the connection between uh, uh, the, the men and the women on the front lines is, is, is a, as powerful a bond as you could see anywhere. Yeah, and one thing that I think is also really cool about this is that not only is it a kick-ass game, but there's because they spent so much time making this historically accurate, it's going to expose the whole World War II story to a whole new generation. Mm -hmm. And that's really, you know, I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of this game for that reason. And the fact that I get just sit to be in a video game. But, you know, the fact that it's, you know, it is a visceral sort of thing. And, and I think that, you know, Anybody who, who isn't familiar with World War II is going to get a real feel for what it might have been like. Because lots of people are writing articles about that at the mm. moment, saying that this is how we get where our history now. It's through this, and mm. it's almost, it's, there's almost more empathy when you're fighting through an interactive character. Well, there's, there's 20 years since Saving Private Ryan. It's 10 years since Call of Duty had a World War II game. This is a whole new generation, and to mm -hmm. speak to the pride that we've all felt making this game, it has been a true privilege to uh, even watching this behind the mm -hmm. scenes, to be able to share with the world uh, the, the small role that we've gotten to play in bringing this game to, uh, to fans and a whole new generation to understand World War II. Yeah. Josh, yeah, you mentioned connections. Am I right in thinking that somebody who sat around on this stage right now got a punch in on you at some point during the film? <laughs> uh, well, he did. You know, like we were saying, it's just one, it's usually one take. You get the one, one take right and you move on to the next scene. Well, he kept screwing it up and taking another. Can I get one more? We had to get it right. I just need one more. I just need one more. 
Starting to wonder authenticity. If he, if he... We're back to visceral <laughs> authenticity. And he can't, really, you know, hit really, somebody who's six four uh, every day without repercussions. So <laughs> I took my licks where I, I could. I appreciate your dedication to the craft. <laughs> yeah. I just don't like that take. Let's do it one more time. Look <laughs> on Iron Bar. Uh, we're actually watching on the screen right now. We're watching your characters. What is it like watching yourself back? Having gone there, we saw the punch. And um, what is it like watching yourself back in a game at this point? Because obviously you've done TV, you've done films, but watching yourself in the game. Well, you know, it, you're. It takes a while to adjust to this tight, you know, suit that you're wearing. It's all colorful with these balls and the whole thing. Who looked the best? Who looked the best and in the once, suit? <laughs> Jonathan, for sure. He's been doing a lot of squats. A lot of squats. <laughs> Heavy deadlifting. <laughs> Heavy deadlifting makes but, the suit look nice. <laughs> Once like, you get past like that, and once you start to see some of you know some of the results and some of the stuff that the guys are working on in Foster City and all over the world, I think I'm not sure where everybody's at, but they're, you know, again, thank you guys God for awesome. all the work. Uh, but once you start to see what you're actually going to look like, it frees you up to really to really go for it because it's you're not just in some silly suit. You're really it's this is World War II, and and this is some serious stuff. Yeah, and so. It just gave, it gives you a whole new freedom that you wouldn't well, otherwise you have. See, you can imagine your breath when the, you know when we're doing some of these winter scenes. You can squint at a fake sun and the volume, and the, those guys in, in uh, who, who have created this game build that in for you. So that freedom he's talking about, it's it's, it's so exciting to explore. And I think it sets it up for what Call of Duty is, which is great storytelling. But please put hands together for our cast who've come down here today. The three J's. Thank you so much. And all we're talking about there is the campaign. That's just all we're talking about there. Now, Dolly, I would guess. You're still excited right now. I mean, I think I'm just in a state of excitement. I can't really get out of it. That was awesome and very insightful to hear from the cast. Now, don't worry. We still have a lot of reactions and general tweets from the community to deliver to Glenn and Michael. We've got just a handful right here. We have Rob Stang, who says, I hope Michael Condry and Glenn Schofield give us at least a little tease of multiplayer during the reel. Smiley face. Yeah. And at Woodworth Noah, who, and this is in all caps, by the way, this is going to be amazing. Loads of exclamation marks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. N now, as I look through all the tweets, there is an enormous amount of questions revolving around multiplayer. Guys, what can you tell us about multiplayer today? So there you go, the community has spoken. That's what lots of people are excited about. Michael, what can you tell us about multiplayer? Oh my goodness, we have so much to share. Now, we can't show you a lot today, a lot of big stuff coming at E3, but first and foremost, we're talking boots on the ground combat. And, you know, that well-balanced Call of Duty run and gun action in a brutal and visceral head-to-head -head conflict of World War II. So from maps to movement to weapons to melee, you know, our goal was to give players an all-new boots on the ground experience for World War II. And then a bunch of new stuff, right? We've got uh, war, an asymmetrical allied versus Axis mode where factions fight to capture or defend critical objectives. Now this mode changes map design, strategy, teamwork, and we're really excited about its potential. We're also excited about Divisions. Divisions is a fundamentally new way to approach your Call of Duty multiplayer career, and it adds to the player immersion by allowing players to enlist in a specific unit of their choice. And finally, we have Headquarters. Now, this is something special everybody at Sledgehammer Games, and it's a first of a kind for the Call of Duty community. It's a, really a living space where fans can connect, be rewarded, compete, show off, and have fun outside of matches. It's a transformation of how the community comes together, and we really want you to see it to understand it. So just a tiny peek here. Let's take a look. That was a tiny that peak. Was I want more. <laughs> yeah. wow. That was a little tinier than I expected. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when we see more, when we can see more of this? Well, you know, it's coming to E3, MP on the, on the floor. For us, that's the first time Sledgehammer Games has been able to bring it to fans. Mm -hmm. Fans are coming to the conference. So it's going to be big. We're going to bring all that to you at E3. That is going to be excellent. Hey, guys, hey, guys, hey, guys. I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, multiplayer sounds sensational, but after reading other people's questions, I want to ask one of my own. Now, I know that there may or may not be some sort of some sort of co-op mode within within World War II. Now, I am quite a big zombies fan, and there is a lot of people watching around the world that are also in the same boat as me. So, we're all asking right here, right now, what can you tell us about this co-op mode? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 sorry. Um, yeah, you know, our, our third mode is, uh, it's an entirely new story. And uh, it's a pretty horrifying experience, sort of like your office. Um, you know, for, for Michael and I, it's our first horror game in years, and uh, we're really, really psyched about it. Uh, it's the story of uh, the Third Reich's desperate attempt to create an army in the final stages of the war. Uh, we can't wait to share more. Uh, in fact, should we show a little something? Just a little tiny, tiny little peek. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! It's darling before makeup. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you very much. Um, uh, guys, I mean, this says very little, and normally I would be a little disappointed, but how can I be when, I mean, that just looks incredible. I would yeah. ask for more, but I'm probably going to get a no, right? Uh, probably. Yeah. At least I tried. <laughs> that, I tried. That, is, that is a Nazi zombie on the biggest cinema screen <laughs> yes. in the United Kingdom. Yes. And I think that is a fabulous way to end this first look at the Call of Duty World War II than that. It has been an absolute ton of fun, and it's been great having you guys here as well. Yeah, thanks so much. It, it's been a pleasure. You know, our hearts are full being able to share with fans, and we hope fans are just as excited about Call of Duty World War II as we are to make it. Um, without a doubt, it, it really is the most personal and powerful game I've ever worked on. And yeah. I know we can speak for all the developers at Sledgehammer Games when I say that we're holding nothing back for November. Yeah, and you know, uh, you know our thanks again for the support. Uh, this game is for you. And I'm sure Michael would agree, uh, we've talked about this before, that this is the best game we've ever made. The best game. The best, best game. Best game. Yes. There you go. So thank yes, you very yes, much yes, yes, yes. to Glenn and to Michael yes, from sir. Sledgehammer Games. It is going to be... Such a wait till November the 3rd, it really is. So stick it in your eye, Cal, tattoo it to the inside of your eyelids. November the 3rd, that is when this new Call of Duty going back to its root is coming out. World War II with this game. Thank you so much for joining us. Keep in touch by the social channels. How should we leave it? The way we came in. Let's have another look at that trailer. This day is set upon a mighty endeavour. Souls will be shaken with the violences of war in this hour of great sacrifice. We shall prevail. Get your head down and keep moving! We are all that separates the world from darkness. The enemy is ruthless. We cannot. We must not fail. Duty first. There is! Won't be enough for you! We executed the mission. Get me the fuck out of here. How many? We had orders! Get the cover! Lieutenant, tell them what we're all about. No mission too difficult. No sacrifice too great. Welcome to the bloody first. You're a long way from Texas for him, boy. Pre-order now and get access to the private beta.
Cool, boys. Excellent. Right. See you back at the hotel. Let's get to the rooftop bar. And this is Dave. Right, okay, thank you. <laughs> Do you forget for a moment there? Yeah, I wasn't sure, man. So, look, we've got 12 minutes. There is a countdown that's going on. We're going to wrap up everything that you've seen 11, tonight. 49, 48, oh come on, Nate. Oh, my God, what happens when it gets to zero, man? Um, and Holly's got a list of stuff that we're going to go through, we're going to chat through, and then we're going to get Glenn and Michael back on stage to answer a couple of our questions. So, Holly, kick us off, Holly. What, what's the number one on your list? Okay, so this one kind of sounds a little bit daft, okay. but with <laughs> okay, Call of Duty World War II, they have said that they haven't been able to make this before because it needed current-gen technology. It's they couldn't do it previously. It certainly looks different. Dave and I are quite old, and uh, we Speaking remember so. <laughs> Come World, on, dude. World War II games that we used to play on old systems. They did not look like this one. I know. I they distinctly remember playing Call of Duties, like the first four, in 4x3, yeah. through a SCART lead. <laughs> yeah, very so, close like, to the SD, screen. I mean, HD. World War Two, come on, Dave. HD a now HD, is, yeah. is pretty exciting. I'm looking soon, forward to that. Yeah, exactly. And well, like you were saying, it's very appropriate that we're here at the. Um, this screen is enormous. I yeah. hope they don't put our faces on it at any point because that would be terrible for everybody. Yeah, it's really appropriate here. It's going to be a big cinematic experience. But it's also got a story, Holly, point number two. It does have a story. Yeah, we're actually going to be following uh, Private Red Daniels. It's the most American name ever. It is the most American name ever because <laughs> he is in the American army. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, but however, there will be Allied soldiers as well, so you'll come across the French and the British. Yeah, and it's a story about camaraderie. I picked up on that term a lot, camaraderie. Yeah, you do. Um, I can't even say it. I say it wrong. I say camaraderie. Well, you're saying it like, wrong. Well, it's that's camaraderie. Why I didn't say it. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, you know, it's going to be a story about a squad, not just a person, um, and how they interact. There's also going to be iconic World War II moments. Definitely, right. like the feel you, of it. You like, you like number three. Yes, if you, if you like, yeah, number three. Well, it's good. The, the journey is very much kind of 1945, yeah. 1944 through Europe from D-Day. It's the kind of, you know, it's the classic. I think Band of Brothers is a big touching point for, for people um, of my generation. So it's going to be, yeah, moving from kind of France, those, that big kind of set piece of the D-Day landing all the way through to Germany. Yeah, I mean, we saw some of the D-Day uh, landings in the trailer, which looks harrowing and, and horrible. And they've also <laughs> spoken about the Battle of the Bulge, the liberation of Paris. And then I heard the Rhine was mentioned, and, you know, it, it You were ends really taking notes, in 1945. Man. You were doing well. I'm just saying, man, you know Dave, what else happened Dave's in 1945? Holly, yeah, <laughs> quick, quick, <laughs> before I? we came out here. I'm, I'm so conscious of the numbers, Holly. These ones ticking down. And our next one, which is... Right, we're going into the multiplayer stuff. We're starting with headquarters. Yeah. For me, I thought this was one of the coolest things. This is like a social space. Mm. So this is where you can almost come and hang out beforehand. I, I want to know a little bit more, and I think this is... I'm going to try and push Glenn and Michael well, to give me a bit more later yeah, on well as well. Well, exactly. Imagine if we got the opportunity to actually well, ask they, them. they said sneak peek, and it was like the sneakiest peek ever. I mean, it was like well, looking through a little crack I in the door. I actually missed it. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, right, I You were right, writing notes at the time. But, I mean, it's pretty amazing. That's like a completely new innovation for Call of Duty. Like, so I don't know what that is going to mean. Dude, there might be something that's like a Call of Duty online that I'm good at now, just hanging out. What, you just, that's the bit you're good at. I'm really good at multiplayer. Just hang out and chat to people and make friends. Yeah, exactly. I'm really social. You're really bad at making friends. Thanks, man. Thanks, Dave. And also, there were some new modes which have been announced. Holly, you have a line to tell us about. This is on point number five, divisions, right? I will tell you my line about divisions. Um, so this basically allows you to take on, funnily enough, different divisions. For example, you could take infantry or you could take um, being in the armor division. Uh, however, it will impact your MP progression. Yeah, this is progression. such a huge thing on Call of Duty. So it's yeah. really interesting that there's this uh, like a mode that's going to kind of uh, change the way that you progress through the yes. online system. Um, and there's another one, Dave, which yeah. is called my favourite. I have liked no, this one. I don't know how they came up with this name, yeah. but the, one of them's called War. <laughs> so new mode called War. Can you tell us and what are the details on War, Holly? Uh, I will tell you the details on War mode. Uh, this is narrative driven. So the idea here is the players take part in some of the iconic World War II battles, mm. the Allied versus the Axis forces. But this time you're in teams and you're fighting for strategic like objectives. Right. As soon as I heard strategy, man, I thought... I'm thinking, you know, big war room table, pushing around the guys. I could be good at that. Yeah. And then doing the battles for the greater good, your team. So it's just, it's just great, but it is great that, it, you know, that there's new modes coming, there's new uh, multiplayer experiences still coming out of Call of Duty. Yes. Um, we need to move along, though. We're talking about kind of online experiences. Co-op mode, who, yes. we tossed a coin. Who gets to say it? Dave gets to say it. Uh, Nazi zombies. There we go. <laughs> you almost, I you mean, almost I was sorry. Forgot. I was overwhelmed by the moment there. I was, yeah, Nazi zombies. Which, I mean, uh, you all saw the art. Looks ridiculously looks hideous. Like, really, really horrible. And they've, again, just wet our appetites with that. So not 
a lot to say, but well, you know, you know a little bit about the story, right, Holly? Yeah, the idea is Third Reich, they're getting desperate, so they've turned to the crazy science, which has created Nazi zombies. Yeah, it's the classic Nazi zombie story. Nazi <laughs> cultism. <laughs> yeah. Bad dudes. Um, and we're going to we're gonna round out, obviously, we're from PlayStation yep. Access, so this is good news for us. The PlayStation uh, relationship... Thank you to the one person who walked, <laughs> by the way, <laughs> yeah. that's really nice of we you. We can't see you because of the lights, <laughs> but you're my favourite. Um, and the PlayStation uh, relationship continues for another year. Holly, what does that mean? So we know the beta is coming, but we can tell you that you will be playing it first on PlayStation 4. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, that's great. There's some PlayStation fans in the audience. Right, well, I guess we should kind of move on to the next bit. So Absolutely. that was our wrap-up. So in case for some reason you missed the live stream, this was kind of the wrap-up of everything that was shown and hopefully a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I guess we should bring our guests out so we can grill them it and try and get more information. Brilliant to put some yes. questions too. Let's welcome back onto stage Glenn and Michael from Sledgehammer. Hi guys. Hey, I'm going to touch. Thank you. Thank you. I think it was camaraderie. <laughs> Is it camaraderie? Oh, oh, no, I've said yeah. that oh, thousands of people. Cool. Was oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know. Oh, oh that's embarrassing. Oh, I'm going to have to change my question. Okay. I don't have a <laughs> pocket to put my hand <laughs> in to look really relaxed. So, guys, uh, so that was an amazing presentation. Thank you so much for joining us back on stage. Um, for, our, for people who watch our channel, it's not a Call of Duty kind of dominated channel, so we hear boots on the ground a lot, right? And I think anyone who follows Call of Duty knows exactly what that means. <laughs> but for the tens of people out there who don't, <laughs> could you just kind of give us a sense of what, what does that mean for Call of Duty, where it is now, and what does boots on the ground, going back to boots on the ground mean? Yeah, I mean, boots on the ground, classic Call of Duty, run and gun, fast action, strategic gameplay, right? It's what Call of Duty was born with and what we're bringing it back to. Yeah. So it's, it's fun, it's fast, it's strategic, it's that great um, skill-based gunplay that made Call of Duty what it is today. Hmm. Um, and it's also, I mean, one of the things that really struck me from, from your presentation, uh, and I mentioned Band of Brothers, uh, on stage, I've actually been watching it with my son. He's um, he's probably slightly too young to watch it, so I won't say how old he is. But it is very <laughs> interesting to think that there's a generation of players out there who this is going to be their first kind of big media exposure to to World War Two, right? And that's right. something that right. you guys get to get to give them. So is that something that you guys as a studio have thought about a lot? Yeah, you know, um, we knew that we knew um, there'd probably be you know one two generations that haven't really watched uh, Private Ryan, and uh, and it's been ten years since the last World War Two game with uh, Call of Duty. So that was one of the reasons why we paid real attention to getting everything right and 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 trying to really tell the story. And, and as we we said earlier, it's about respect, mm -hmm. you know, um, and so we want to make sure that they're not if they do you know when they play the game they. They learn something, and what they do learn will be correct. You know, it's still about having fun, yeah. but get the details right. I can tell you, though, when we started this journey um, almost three years ago, it was really wanting to tell a, a really impactful narrative and a story, yeah. largely to ensure that, that this sort of conflict doesn't happen again. And as we dove in with our military historian and got to know the veterans and really researched, it was powerful for us because not only we were telling the story so that it would never happen again, but we're telling it because the people who fought in that war aren't here to tell it for themselves, right? And so it, there is a lot of honor and respect um, that we've put behind this. Everybody at the studio has put behind it because it's a... I mean, it's a, we learned a lot. I mean, we learned so much, you know, digging really deep into it. And um, I think one of the other things is that in the last 20 years, um, a lot more information has gotten out. So, you know, we've got some details that, you know, may not have been around. And guys, um, we, we talked a lot t today about the, uh, you know, the characters involved in it. There, it obviously focuses around red, but there's, dare I say, camaraderie or camaraderie. You know, there's a squad, there's a squad of men. Friendship. Exactly, friendship, there's friendship uh, between soldiers. Um, any chance we're going to be seeing any of the story told from any of their perspectives, or is this very much red's story? Well, it's... Uh it's Red's story, but it's also the story of the platoon and, and what they, um, who, who and what they encounter. So uh, we will have uh, different characters. I mean, this is an international war, so, um, and it's also a different time, right? So we, we, have a, we have a lot of different characters in the game. And uh, we talked about Rousseau earlier uh, and Zussman and, uh, and Crowley, who's uh, a British we also have, um, uh, you know, we have, we bump into an African-American um, 
platoon that was there, and of course the the way that they were treated is going to be shown in the game. And uh, um, we don't we don't really pull any punches in the game. We just try and tell the truth. And you know, and really across the whole game, single player, multiplayer, zombies. Um, this is a global cast and a diverse cast, right? So there's hero heroes of the war from all over the globe. Nearly every country is involved in some way, and so women heroes, men heroes, you know, yeah. all kinds of diversity of um, opportunities to play um, characters throughout the World War II conflict, and that was important to us. And Call of Duty is going back to World War II, which I'm, I know uh, the whole world is very excited uh, about, you know, where it all began. Um, was part of your process at all going back and looking at the, uh, you know, the early Call of Duty games set in World War II, and, and if so, what were you looking for and what did you learn from those? Glenn and I have been making games for 20 plus years. We remember them coming out. And um, we were fans of the franchise before we were developers of the franchise. So it was a real honor to be given the opportunity as a studio. It was pretty humbling for Activision to give us a chance to bring it back to its roots. But we really wanted to tell our story, an original story. You know, the first infantry, the fighting first 15,000 or 35,000 troops. Yeah. Um, and we chose a squad of 12. So it's a very... Um, original and unique story that we bring to life in this game. Cool. Now we have one minute, so there's one question I really uh -oh. want to ask, and that is about headquarters. Uh -oh. So, um, obviously, you, said you were going to grill us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got a minute, so probably not. Okay, um, but can you really give us some kind of details? What do we do in this yeah. space? Now we've seen other online shooters with social spaces, and you can visit vendors, and you can interact with your friends. What are you actually bringing with uh, headquarters? Well, what I can tell you, E3 is going to be huge for us, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I will tell you, headquarters is a big deal. Headquarters is really um, and a, thing, a big innovation that we've put a lot of time into at the studio. We're calling it the off the front lines experience. There's so much great community of Call of Duty fans out there um, and we want to provide a way for them to be rewarded, to compete, to be recognized, to show off and to be social. So there'll be fun new things you can do only in headquarters. Uh oh, I think I lost my mic. No, you good. And, <laughs> and, um, and, a bunch of ways, uh, and a bunch of ways to really engage in the community in ways you haven't done before. Amazing. Well, that is it, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming back out and joining thank us. Um, Appreciate guys, it. Guys, thank, thank you so much for watching at home, yes. for being here. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Very, very nerve-wracking. Um, now, you guys, we would really like it if you would stay tuned for the YouTube channel because there's always more coming up. We're definitely seeing you guys at E3 now. Certainly. Uh, yes. So you don't forget to join PlayStation Access because there's going to be loads more coverage of Call of Duty World War II. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank it's you. been an incredible evening, and uh, we look forward to see what you've got coming. Yeah. Thanks to you, and we thanks to everyone to here. Yeah, thank it's you. Been great. The Second World War goes beyond all boundaries in every category. We see more nations involved in a single conflict. We see casualties higher than ever before. Just a generation before, at the end of the First World War, the Great War, they didn't call it World War I because they expected that nothing like this would ever happen again. And a generation later, something happens that's even bigger and even worse in so many ways. We have the honor of making this year's Call of Duty called World War II. Our chance to tell the epic, gritty, visceral story of the world's greatest conflict. There is a genuine interest in producing a product that is historically authentic. Every part of this, this game has been researched and nuanced and studied and scanned and photographed. We really, really try to get the respect and the, the details right of the game. This is about ordinary people doing extraordinary things brotherhood, the camaraderie, um, the guy next to me. That became the theme for our game. On a personal level, honoring the story was crucial for us and it was something we really committed to. Our story weaves in and out of real historical events. We've gone to great pains to create those authentic battles. One of the biggest things we wanted to get across was a sense of camaraderie. The people you serve side by side with, you develop bonds with those people. Hopefully players will walk away from this story feeling like they really know these guys. Welcome to the Bloody First. And they care about them. Art influences the game in a huge way. The lighting and the tonality and the colors. We want to be able to have the player feel something. 
By creating a very believable environment, it allows the player to slip into this world. The vision for the art direction we call dark and beautiful. It was emotionally dark, visually beautiful. More than just being cool and pretty, it's about trying to get people to have a deeper emotional reaction to the game. Our modeling department is amazing. The weapons, vehicles, the tanks, even the cars you might see on the city street. The level of detail is just phenomenal. It's a huge endeavor, but we have to stay true to the source material. We have to research and watch a lot of film, a lot of archive footage to see how combatants in World War II would behave. Sometimes the hardest things are the biggest payoffs. The combination of the model, the animation, and the audio creates that punchiness to the weapon. We record everything. Every location we record in for the game, the ambiences, the music, the dialogue, everything has to be created from scratch. We had a real opportunity here to do a level of authenticity and reality, true to the war, true to the soldiers who fought in that war. We had this great opportunity with Marty Morgan, our military advisor. We spent a lot of time on a gun range with all of the authentic World War II weaponry. It's critical to understand the absolute violence of the Second World War. It's critical to understand how weapons and firepower function. This is a story that's bigger than all of us. This is a whole new generation who might not have a lot of experience with in this time period. I think this is a great opportunity to have them experience that and feel that. We've made something pretty incredible and I'm very proud of it. It's perhaps the greatest compliment I've been paid in my career to work on this project. This is the most powerful game I've ever worked on. It's very personal, it's very humbling. You know, I've been making games for over 26 years. And I'll tell you, it's the best game we ever made.